Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. That is why I have got to catch him this time. To show these kids that the example he sets is a first-class ticket to nowhere. Oh, Ed, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. Really? Uh-huh. This is Mark. Hey, Mark, it's J.K., but I'm going to put you on hold. Um, I would, on the air, I would play the conference, the, the Denver conference stuff pretty straight. Because okay. I kind of mentioned it this morning. He's, he doesn't have a fucking clue who Logan Paul oh, is. Oh, no worries. Try, no worries. I, 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 I will it. roll with it. <laughs> yeah, I tried to kind of explain it, and he was like, yeah, like I could tell he didn't have a clue That's what okay. I was talking about. Uh, and I would just okay. say, hey, the conference went great. Lots of, you know, thousands of people there, or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so she just did the new story about uh, now later this year they're going to take a cruise and whatever. So Got feel it. free to just say, yeah, you know, tell them on the air, go, I'm getting lots of calls because they made this announcement, and people are like, so the people who believe the earth is flat are going to take it out on the high seas. Like, mm -hmm. you know, feel, feel free to, uh, I mean, he's having fun with it, and I know That's you will fine. Too. That's fine. I'll, I'll, just no jump, worries. Just though. jump into it. Okay. Hang on, brother. Here they come. Hang on. Right. This is Hessenberg. Hit him in the face. 53-year-old Rock. Uh, friend of the show, Mark Sargent, who is a flat earther. Um, we don't believe in the same things, but that doesn't mean we're not good friends. Doesn't mean we're going to get along. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy him. Like, I'm one of those guys, like, I don't mind if you have a different belief system than me. I just don't like it when people get mean or aggressive or dickish about it. Well, the weird thing about the flat earth thing is you just you hear about it in, like, spurts, like, some dudes in the NBA that believe in flat earth, or you'll hear about a, a rapper who believes in flat earth. But then you look at the website, like they had this giant international conference in Denver last month, and then there's conferences every month or every couple of months around the country, around sure. the world. So tons of people believe it. Which, to me, is insanity. But yeah. it's, I, I do love, because I like to ask the questions. I, I go, hey, man, why is there a lunar eclipse? Why, is there, uh, why can you watch a ship sail off the sea and then disappear? Because they go beyond the horizon. The horizon man. But the thing that's different about Mark is he has a whole array of answers for this. A lot of them are like, I think they're just a duck, but they saw me online and they don't have any of their own concepts. Yeah. He actually is all over the world. And that, that I love. Hailing from South Whidbey Island, Washington, our next guest is a former professional gamer and proprietary software trainer. In 2014, he began looking into the flat earth theory and now spends his days telling the world about what he feels has been hidden from the public for decades. He was the keynote speaker at the flat earth conference this past November in Denver. And he's here today to talk about the flat earth cruise set to take place later this year. Please welcome Mark Sargent. Hey man, how you been? I've been pretty well. How about you? Good, good. Now, I got the Flat Earth Conference in Colorado. Uh, the Flat Earth Conference in Denver, Colorado went really, really well. Uh, a lot of great speakers, and the attendees were really enthusiastic. Good, good for you. Now, you, this is awesome. You crazy bastards are now getting on board a, 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 a cruise, and you're doing a Flat Earth cruise, which to me, because if we believe Earth is flat, you seem to be flirting with disaster, my friend. <laughs> okay, well, first off, and I don't, I don't want to let you down or, or kill your expectations, but it's not happening this year. Uh, the Flat Earth, the Flat Earth Conference this year is going to be in Dallas, Texas. It was supposed to be a, a cruise that was heading out of Miami this year, but it's been pushed to Miami for next year. And just for the record, it is not in any way, shape, or form going to be a test of, of if the Earth is uh, a sphere or not. It's kind of like the Mad Mike thing where he was up in the rocket. That was never going to prove that the world was, was flatter or a sphere. So, but yeah, everyone's going to be on the boat and, you know, all the speakers. It's going to be, logistically, it's going to be a little tricky because, you know, with conferences, people drive in from all over the place. But with a with a cruise, you got to you gotta be on time. You got to show up in Miami. And if you miss the boat, well, y you miss the boat. What about tequila, tequila? You got Nellis? What, uh, uh, what is uh, she going to talk about? I'm sorry. Say, say that one more time. Is Teal Tequila going to – you have her booked for the cruise? No. No. No, it's weird. You know, she showed up on the scene early. You know, she was one of the early people along with uh, rapper B.O.B., but we have never heard from her since. 
uh, everybody else we've heard from, you know, Kyrie Irving and uh, the other basketball players and other athletes. But uh, Tequila, Tequila, Tequila just kind of dropped off the map, so to speak. Exactly. By the way, if you're enjoying the show, Mark and I spoke of this before. Let's run through it again. Like, you know, my, my discussion starting with you is like, uh, okay, so why are all the other planets round? And we believe they're round. Right. But we wouldn't be round. And that's been explained to me that we're, you believe we're in a, a terrarium, basically. Like right. We're in a, in yeah, yeah, yeah. The, explain that to me. Yeah, yeah. The short version of, of Flat Earth is that you are living in. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a little early. Uh, you're living in a building uh, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, like a terrarium, a planetarium, uh, a Truman Show, as it were, from the 1998 movie with Jim Carrey. And that everything you see in the sky is just a light show, being you know the, the planets and the stars. Oh, is that real? Uh, no, no, it's not real. You can't land on it. I mean, it's very pretty and very realistic. You know, you, you can't can... land on it. It's the sun, Ben. The what? <laughs> The sun, nobody said you could land on it. <laughs> well, yeah, you can't land on the sun, obviously, but you can't you can't land on anything. You can it they look spherical, of course, but they're supposed to look spherical. You know, it's you're in a giant uh, if you've ever been to Disneyland, you know, a space mountain. It, it's supposed to it's why does it answer this? If I call my friend who lives around the world and I say to you, What time is it? He's in a different time zone and it's dark, what's right. light here if it's all flat? Right. Uh, okay, two reasons. Uh, one, the, the, the common misconception is because, well, it can't be because the sun is so huge, then it's got to be lighting up everything simultaneously. That's like, okay, two, two, two things. One, the sun is not very huge at all. It's very, very, very small. Uh, it's like a mobile going over the outside of a, a child's crib. Uh, so it's just spinning around us like a, like a needle on a record player. And two, uh, even though it's an in, the sun is an incandescent light source, for lack of a better term, it is also probably a directional light source. And we've seen, we've done physical models where you can take a really, really tiny sun and move it around and it does, you know, the daylight in some parts and nighttime in other parts just fine. It works really, really well. You couldn't see it from one side to another like that. Nope. Could, like, could, could, could not do it. And, and it wasn't just the computer simulations that we did. It was the actual, the real simulations. If you make the sun only about 50 miles wide, in, in comparison, which is what we're saying, it's less than 50 miles wide, then it looks just like it should look, but when it travels off into the distance, it just goes off into the distance. It doesn't set, it just goes away. Do you think that if you put yourselves on a cruise, there right. will be a certain amount of panic in the Flat Earthers? No, no, and you know, not not to say that the hype isn't warranted, and it was an interesting story, it was the Guardian that, that created this story. Uh, just a few days ago, and they the, the which is interesting because the Guardian actually did uh, a documentary on us just recently. They flew over from London and covered the Denver conference, and so you've got some members of the Guardian that's gonna, they're going to do not necessarily a pro flat Earth thing, but definitely a neutral flat Earth piece. And you've got other people in the same news organization that just hate us. Oh Lord, they hate us. And this particular guy just railed it's like oh it's really funny they're going to go out in this boat on the water because like you mentioned in in the clip beforehand is that the most common thing if i say can you prove the world is a globe without using nasa eventually everybody comes to the same thing which is well we've seen boats go over the horizon and i said yeah 15 years ago you could actually say that not anymore a boat goes over the horizon and you can take a camera with digital zoom and crank it up and all of a sudden that boat's back in frame it's pulled back in frame, and that can't be because eventually that boat should be on the other side of the hill. It should be gone. Eventually that boat will be. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's that, it's an interesting story. I mean, it's not, again, nobody nobody going on that cruise is going to be worried. You know, it's like, oh, they're going to fall off the edge. It's like, no, 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 no. The boat is just going to be traveling around the Caribbean. And so it's, it's that same theory of it not disappearing, the boat not disappearing, then we must be able to take a... Uh, telescope or an incredible zoom on a camera and see the the walls that are holding us in no 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 because remember the atmosphere that you're breathing right now and again well, the average person doesn't know this uh is only about 99 percent transparent you're breathing in sort of a thin version of water so if water is h2o you're breathing in n4o which is 80 percent nitrogen most people it's like you're only breathing in a small amount of oxygen so anyway what that means is 
it just gets more and more thick. In fact, when you get out words of about 100 miles, 150 miles, uh, it starts getting really thick. It's, you know, it's like looking underwater. And so when people say, well, why can't you see um, Japan from San Francisco with a telescope? Why don't we just take our telescope sideways? I go, because only it's not fully transparent. And now if you pulled the atmosphere off entirely, which of course would kill us dead, uh, then yeah, you probably could see Japan from, from there. Because a lot of people say, why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? And it's like, because sure. the, the atmosphere is very, it's, it's still thick. It's, again, you're, you're breathing in a soup. You, I love you. Because you actually have, no matter what I ask you, it doesn't matter if I agree with what you're going to tell me. You already <laughs> have it thought through. And I, that makes me love you. I had to though when I when I was doing this I was not going to come out and be you know the tip of the spear when it came to flat earth until I could answer all the questions I did troubleshooting for a living for for years and so I sat down for nine months on this thing and said okay what about this what about this what about this and finally I woke up in the beginning of 2015 and said you know what I think I got it and that's when I put it Have out you ever had any, uh, any uh, mental health Oh, you mean, <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. You believe, believe me about one in 20 people that, that I interview with asked me that at some point. Uh, no, no, believe it or not. Uh, I was, uh, department head at three different tech companies, uh, president of my HOA, uh, you know, yeah. Of everything else, I don't, dis I don't agree with that. I find that <laughs> association of someone who's just. Well, I mean, yeah, HOA people aren't exactly nice. HOA people are known for being mean, but they're not known for being completely mental. Uh, but I, but to, to that extent, though, I never got married and I never had kids. But it wasn't because I was I was a nut job. It was mostly because the the opportunity never presented itself, which was weird. You lied. So tell me this. Now it appears that Russia and America uh, are at odds. Um, China, everybody is somewhat at odds, yeah. and uh, yet they all. They had a space program, and they all tell the same story. But yet, I wouldn't say that we're all together on, you know, in, in the world. You know, you know, yeah, what it's like, it's. Would be of that? Why would they try to undermine us in other ways, but all come together on that? That that is a great point, and we we bring that up a lot. And yeah, you know, the United States and the Soviets, when they there was a Soviet thing uh, back in the day, uh, even though we had this Cold War going on. We also had this space race where we were kind of hand in hand to where now, again, most people don't know, we land, if you believe in the mainstream space program, we land our stuff in uh, Russian Russian airspace. We landed on, on the Russian soil. And, you know, that story that came out yesterday when NASA was backing the Chinese claim that they've got a rover on the far side of the moon. And and people are saying, well, shouldn't they do the opposite? I go, no, no, they have to back them because if you if the if if the United States goes after China, because a lot of people on social media are saying the the Chinese thing is fake because they're not producing any video, they're producing these grainy still shots. It's like it's 2019. Where's the freaking HD? There's nothing coming out of there. And the, the United it's States. On the dark side of the moon currently, though. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, China, yeah, China says they're on the far. I, you say dark side, but technically it's the far side because it's both dark and light. Well, yeah, but that's not what they're saying. And it's, it's like, come on, you should be able to transmit something from from the far side. And and NASA has to back them. NASA's, oh, yeah, they're totally legit. Because if they say they're not legit, well, then the questions come back at NASA. But Putin just floated Russia that they were, they, were, they floated the fake uh, uh, moon landing idea and the conspiracy that they, they weren't sure that it wasn't true. Yeah. Not that many months ago. That that is interesting. Well, Russia, Russia, Russia and I are rivals. You know, people I got into an argument with a girl from ABC that said, you know, because I said, look, we're not enemies. I go, we're rivals. That's about as good as we're going to get. You know, we're red team, blue team type type thing. And they yeah, so they poke fun at us every once in a while. But, the, you know, it's not going to get much traction over here. We're still United States. They're still our number one rival and they're going to say some stuff, but they haven't released anything along those lines. You know, say right, because. Is, Sorry, go ahead. This is the way the world is. You, you lie. If you're a flat earther, this is this is the man you want to know. Uh, you want to make sure that you get down to. It's going to be. Now you've decided it's going to be this year in uh, Texas. Or Dallas, yeah, da Dallas, Texas. There's another conference in Toronto, Canada. There's regional meetups all over the place. Uh, in fact, there's a mini conference happening in Los Angeles in five weeks, and I'm going to be presenting down at that as well. And uh, it's called the QE 2019 conference, question everything conference. Uh, 
So they're all over the place. All you have to do is type in Flat Earth Conference and look it up. There's all sorts of stuff this year. Go, man, go. Mark, always interesting to speak with you. Uh, enjoy your day. Thank you. And uh, let us know when the, the cruise comes back on later and, and uh, into next year, all right? Okay, I will. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, fantastic as always, brother. I appreciate it, man. Thank oh, you. I'll, I'll okay. give you a shout on the next one. All right. Thank you, man. See you, buddy. All right. Bye-bye.